last time on T-Rev. You made a great point on Twitter the other day, and I thought it was awesome because you said specifically you were like, there's no they never said there's no other DNA. They just they're only talking about the one on the sheet. So that right there kind of opened my eyes to, wow, maybe I think she's on to something. I think maybe they maybe there is other DNA. Right. There's so much we don't know. I, I would say to Rev that when we get to the trial phase, which I think will be years from now, possibly, mm. I think that we are going to see so much more information. And in fact, I, I know that to be the case because a probable cause affidavit was done very early on in the in the case after about really 10 to 12 days of true investigation. Um, when I say that, it's because in the early days, in the early month of the investigation, they were just trying to narrow down people. They were just trying to establish alibis for different suspects. They were just trying to figure out who this could be. But once they honed in on Brian Koberger as a possible subject, which really started because of that Elantra, mm -hmm. which they started looking into at the very end of November, in December, they subpoenaed his telephone information. Well, that led them to all this activity near and around 1122 King Road. So now they're really starting to see, hmm, this is problematic. This is a clue, right? And right. so they started going down that evidence trail. But then uh, once the evidence really started coming in, the videos started coming in, they put him under surveillance. They had a very short time to write that probable cause affidavit. So it only has so much information in it. Thank you for educating us on that. I appreciate that also. Now, another thing, and I know I'm throwing things at you, but I, it's just something that I question because I've seen it. What was it on Dateline and mentioned on maybe News Nation and a few others about the some IDs being found, right? It was just a source. Maybe, I don't know who the source is, but it was put out there. And I, I thought it was interesting that it was even mentioned. Do you know where that would come from or would that just be like, a source that is going to be unnamed. Yeah, let me give give you the specifics. So Thank if you look at the affidavit return for the Pennsylvania house, his parents' house, you will see on there that there are 10 IDs that were in a glove in a box. That was really confusing at first because was it in a glove box? And I remember being on News Nation and I actually misspoke. It said glove box instead of in a glove in a box. And I had to go through and and reestablish that because I just misspoke. The information, uh, however, we don't know about the IDs other than T. Rev. And this is interesting. A source contacted someone on uh Mr. Cuomo's team mm. and said there is a relation of one of those IDs to 1122 King. No one ever said it's to one of the deceased. No one ever said it's to even um, Dylan Mortensen or, or to anyone living at the house then. The only information that I was told was that it was to 1122 King Road. It was very interesting. I don't know more about it than that. Wow. Thank you for breaking that down. I was actually just answered my question and I appreciate you doing that. Also, what is your thoughts or what what is your take on them? The prosecution has said, what did they say? Because like some, someone said this question and I wanted to ask it also. It says, why would the prosecution agree to the destruction of the house? Well, as I see it, what's happening is, of course, um, the university owns it now because it was given to them uh, by the original owner. The defense nor the prosecution are putting in a motion to keep that house erected. I find it very interesting because no matter whether I am in the defense camp or the prosecution camp, I think that house should remain. Uh, it's so important, right, T. Rev? Just imagine if you were on the jury. You would want to feel the proximity with going up the stairs from where Dylan Martinson was to where Kaylee and Maddie were. You would want to know if you cracked open the door, what could you really see? More importantly, even than that, you would want to hear sounds. Remember, 
there is sound from the outside of that house that was gleaned that's used in that probable cause affidavit i would want to have somebody go outside and speak and and see or have somebody inside speak and see if it could be heard outside i would want to he- hear if i could hear footsteps all of that's so important and videos are great and and they're going to have a very great schema it's been uh I really need to put it on uh, Twitter again uh, to show exactly what these schematics and videos can do. But nothing is like being there. Nothing's like walking it and feeling it and hearing it. Nothing. Rev Gang Strong. Justice for the Idaho Four.